Her expression is really simple. Okay. When you say you need to go beyond commodity production, in your own mind, forget Marx. In your own mind. <laughs> uh, if you can, forget Marx. Does, does something like allocation according to needs produced by public sector or by firms in socialism here in Yugoslavia, not by public sector, allocated according to needs, does that to you, is, is that to you a form of moving beyond commodity production, even though its inputs are commodities in most cases, but its outputs are allocated according to needs? That's one down to the other one, but it's okay. Then, then, Does it even resemble? When, when, when this is the simple question, then I uh, <laughs> uh, don't want to see what is the complicated question. Um, I, I'm very skeptically in this uh, to have commodities as input and as output non commodity. <laughs> I cannot rem uh, imagine how this should work because you always have an interdependent production. Also, the, the public sector, when it has input as commodities, then someone else must produce these commodities as output. So you always have then input and output as commodities. Um, maybe you only do a kind of redistribution that the public sector takes a lot and redistributes it. But then you have um, also a kind of contradiction of two logics, uh, a logic of commodity production of valorization on the one hand and a logic of fulfilling needs. This leads to conflicts. As a transition strategy, in my view, maybe this makes sense to say to, to make bigger the public sector, but when you have these uh, conflicts between the, the private commodity producing sector and the public sector, then uh, you must accept these conflicts and fight against the, the private sector and uh, not to have the idea, yes, we have to come to a kind of, of equilibrium. By this, uh, the private sector will win the, the game. We crushed Yes, the, the, this kind of, of sector um, commodity producing sector for me can only have a transitional existence. But the question, may, maybe uh, this can lead very simply to, um, to misunderstandings. When I uh, say it ha can has only a transitional existence, the consequence is not a big state which runs everything according to the Soviet uh, model. Uh, the model would be uh, the free associations of production, not a, a strong center, free associations, but these free associations not as competitors in a market, like in, in the model of market socialism, but free associations which communicate, which consciously cooperate with the other associations and together uh, set out uh, uh, the design of social production. This would be the alternative, and uh, the state should have uh, the, the fate which uh, Engels, uh, Friedrich Engels very nicely formulated, the state should slowly die away. So an, a non-capitalist society, a socialist uh, society, of course, is a society without state and not with an, uh, a total state which controls everything. Okay. So now no, the, the I complicated think, yeah, question. question. So Mr. Mm -hmm. asked you about the role of money today being, being credit being much more important. So what he asked was how does Marx theory apply to today? And you said Marx always talked about the ideal average. But the question I'm posing to you, in the ideal, ideal average, when Marx lived, the production of the state in, in GDP, when we recalculate backwards, in UK was less than 1%. Today it's 35%. And actually 35 is the is the average of EU 15 countries. Now it is, I mean, the workers involved in it are only 6-7%, so it's not as much, so... No, 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 no. Now, now I think... No, no, I know, I know this, but the no, deliver is, is how much, in ideal average, capitalism today in Europe produces 35% of final goods and services by the state. No, 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 no. This is, this is, this is wrong. These are local No, 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 no. <laughs> this, is, this is completely uh, wrong. I think this is uh, a nice... Um, um, problem created by, by statistics. Okay. Um, for example, um, in I, I can I, I take the German um, example because I, I know better than from, from other states. In Germany, you have a kind of public uh, pension fund that the workers um, pay a part of, of the wage uh, to a certain fund and this fund uh, pays the, the pensions. Because it is publicly run, it counts to this 45% uh, uh, you said. 
but that it's publicly run is only a, a kind of formality. When the uh, pension fund is completely private run, but works according to the same logic. Economically, nothing has changed, but in the statistics, the, uh, this state, so-called state quote, reduces from 45% to, let us say, 40%. Also, real, the, the real economic impacts would be zero. So when we speak really of production, of commodity production, then the uh, part of the German state Perhaps it is not 1%, maybe it is uh, 3% because some big companies are still in uh, state ownership like um, uh, the trains, uh, Deutsche Bahn, the, the train company is still uh, in state, uh, stately hold. Um, the telecommunication system, the, sta the state still has a, a sh part of, of the shares. So this is state-run um, production. but. The logic of this production is purely capitalist. So it is just, uh, for example, in, in the telecommunication, it is just if the state is the, the owner of the shares, or if I am the owner of the share, or my grandmother, it makes no difference because it is a, just a capitalist uh, uh, enterprise. Yeah, same thing. You misunderstood. I, I was not clear. Health, education, and care services. In UK, for example, are well over 20% on their own. I think they're 22, 23. When you remove pensions, and when you remove ownership in capitalist-run complex, so simply producing outputs in health, education, care, and housing is 20% of GDP around the world, for example. These are non common they're allocated according to needs. You go in education, you get it so far, now you pay for it. It's changing slowly. Yeah, uh, okay. okay, this is, yeah, so, now, there you are, we are right. So I'm now first time. now I, I misunderstood something. This is, um, this is another thing. Um, there are certain tasks, certain activities, which um, are necessary for a capitalist system of production and, and reproduction, for example, education. Uh, the capitalist enterprises need not only workers, they need educated workers, they need uh, qualified workers. And the question is, these prerequisites of uh, capitalist production, are they produced in a capitalist manner? Let us say a private school produces education as a commodity. The parents pay for the education of their children so that they are uh, qualified. And the school can be run completely as a capitalist enterprise making profits because what the parents pay is much more than the school has uh, to, to spend. Or is it provided by the state? In the long historical uh, run, uh, it is true that there is a tendency that these state tasks um, extend. It is even it, in economics it has a, a name. It is Wagner's um, law. It is, by the way, the same Wagner to whom the, re the um, remarks to Wagner were directed by Marx. The last <laughs> Marxian manuscript, very important manuscript, direct to, to this Adolf uh, Wagner. Um, this is on the one hand true. Uh, it shows that capitalist um, um, production becomes more complex, needs more prerequisite, and the state has to provide them. So the state as a non-commodity producer becomes more uh, important. But on the other hand, in capitalist um, development, it is also al always questioned what the state really has to do and what can be done by gaining profits by private enterprises. A nice um, example are uh, the trains uh, in 19th century. These train uh, companies started as shareholding uh, companies. They uh, started to, to construct, but uh, then in many cases they, uh, they couldn't continue, they went to bankruptcy, but the trains were so economically important that the state took uh, over the, the companies and as a state activity provided the, the economy, you can say, this mobility. In 20th century, end of the 20th century, the situation changed. It was possible that trains again can be run with profits and uh, this wave of privatization started. So what was before a non-commodity of the state now was produced as a commodity 
and uh, very similar tendencies we have in health, in education, in, in pension funds. So um, I'm not sure if nowadays we can, can really hold Wagner's law that always the, um, the state sector will extend. Maybe uh, it will extend from these beginnings to, to a certain amount and then in waves it will become bigger in the next crisis, it will become smaller. Uh, or, uh, no, in, it will become bigger. Then there is a wave of privatization. It becomes smaller. In the next crisis, when we have a lot of bankruptcies, it will become bigger again. This is um, this is true. This is an, but I, I wouldn't say that this uh, in any way objects to to the ideal average Marx um, uh, analyzed in Capital. It points out the necessity of the analysis of state, which Marx wanted to do. He, he had the idea to write a book on the state, an, an abstract uh, uh, book on the state, like on capital, which he didn't uh, do. And in such an uh, analysis, this point uh, indeed would uh, be an important point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.